Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Variant, it's the Amazon Princess versus the unstoppable juggernaut. Welcome to Variant, we love comics more than Brain wants to take over the world, and if you've watched 90s cartoons, you should have gotten that reference. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Now, some of you might think this is an odd matchup, but it's actually a pretty good matchup in my opinion. The two are incredibly strong and have even fought each other briefly in a DC Marvel crossover story. So since I personally like this matchup, I decided to make an episode about it. So let's lay down the facts and see who would win. I'm going to kick this off by starting with everyone's favorite Amazonian, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, or Princess Diana's original origin, is as follows. She was an Amazon warrior princess who grew up on a hidden and mysterious island, originally called Paradise Island and later called the Mascara. The Amazonians parted from Greece because of the evilness of man, so guided by Aphrodite, the Amazonians sailed to the promise haven of peace and protection. Once at the island, they built a city that no man was allowed to enter. But unlike the other Amazonians, Diana wasn't born. Instead, she was formed out of clay by her mother. And brought to life by the Olympian gods. Needless to say, Diana was the greatest of all the Amazonians. One day, a United States intelligence officer named Steve Trevor crash landed near the Paradise Island. When Wonder Woman found him, she nursed him back to good health, but in doing so, fell in love with him. Long story short, Diana was chosen to take Steve Trevor back to America after winning a tournament, but she had to remain there to fight evil. After she won the tournament, her mother rewarded her with her iconic costume and gave her her famous lasso of truth. The magic lasso carries Aphrodite's power and can make anyone confined by the lasso submit to Wonder Woman's will and or tell the truth, hence the name. Lasso of Truth. Moving on to Juggernaut, Kane Marco's mother died when he was young and he was raised by his father Kurt. Marco's father eventually married Brian Xavier's widow, Sharon. And they moved into the Xavier Mansion, which later became the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning in Westchester, New York. Kane was a bully to his stepbrother Charles Xavier, partly due to the fact that his father favored him over Kane. Unnoted Kane, Charles was succeeding because of his mutant abilities to read minds, including Kane's. Sometime later, both Kane and Charles were drafted into the US Army and were in the same unit during the Korean War. During one mission, they were in a firefight and Kane deserted of the unit. Charles went after him in hopes of bringing him back before he got in trouble. Kane stumbled into a cave that led to the lost temple of Sidorak, where he discovered the crimson gem of Sidorak. When he touched the gem, an inscription magically appeared that read, whosoever touches this gem shall be granted the power of the crimson bands of Sidorak. Henceforth, you who read these words shall become forevermore a human juggernaut. Kane was then mystically transformed into Sidorak's avatar, a living juggernaut. The unleashed mystical energies caused the cave to collapse, but Charles managed to escape just in time. Charles in the world believed that Kane was dead. However, while Kane was buried under the rubble of the immense mountain that covered the whole temple, the Juggernaut was not stopped by this, thanks to his recently acquired powers. And he was able to dig himself out of the trillion tons of rocks that fell on him. It took Juggernaut several years to do so, but that just means he had a lot of time to plot revenge against his stepbrother, Professor Xavier. So just to set it in stone one more time, Juggernaut is not a mutant. He got his powers from the magical stone I just mentioned. So for those of you who didn't know that, I bet I just blew your mind. Now that you know a little bit more about their origins, let's talk about what's most important to the fight. Power powers and abilities. And since we're already talking about the Juggernaut, let's start with him. He has immense strength. He can lift 100 tons with ease due to the mystical nature of his powers granted by an external source of magic. Juggernaut can increase his physical strength to immeasurable levels with a simple thought when he needs it. Juggernaut has been able to defeat powerhouses such as Thing, Colossus, and Professor Hulk, among numerous others. The limits of Juggernaut's strength are unknown simply because of the fact that it stems from a magical source. Despite Juggernaut's huge size, his leg muscles allow him to run at superhuman speed and once in motion, he cannot be stopped. He's invulnerable having an invisible force field surrounding his body, allowing him to be completely immune to any physical attack, no matter its magnitude or intensity. He can still be thrown, knocked back, or hit by blows, but he cannot actually be damaged by brute force. Juggernaut also has a healing factor. He has been reduced to a skeleton before and was able to regenerate. As long as there's a single molecule of Kane's being left, he is unable to die, implying the Juggernaut has one of the fastest healing factors in Marvel. The mystical energies of the gem flowing through Kane's veins completely sustain him, meaning the Juggernaut can survive indefinitely without food, water, or air, hence him being able to survive for several years under the rocks that fell on him that I mentioned earlier. In addition, Juggernaut is unable to tire or fatigue no matter the physical exertion his body puts out. Moving on to Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman is extremely strong. She is one of the strongest heroes in the entire DC Universe, up there with characters like Shazam, Martian Manhunter, and Superman. In the New 52, Wonder Woman shows a new strength level while fighting a god. She removes her bracelets and goes into a berserker rage of power. 
power. We find out that Wonder Woman's bracelets are what protect her opponents from her intense power. Wonder Woman was even able to take down Supergirl. We see that they're close in strength, but Wonder Woman was able to overpower Supergirl. Wonder Woman is able to fly at hypersonic speeds. She also has a healing factor, super agility, stamina, divine wisdom, and hand senses, and is a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat amongst a bunch of other powers. Wonder Woman uses weapons like her lasso of truth, which compels people to tell the truth. Her lasso has been shown to restore people's lost memories, get rid of illusions, and protect people who are in close proximity from magical attacks. She has her bracelets of victory, which were created with the remains of Zeus's shield. She uses these bracelets to deflect all sorts of attacks, like bullets or anything else that comes her way. She has her royal tiara, which is razor sharp and can be used as a boomerang of sorts. It is also magical and therefore can be used to injure Superman. And of course, she has a magical sword, which she uses often when in battle. This sword has been used most specifically against those with the power of invulnerability, as invulnerability generally does not work against magical items. It is generally represented as a short sword. In Wonder Woman Volume 4, Issue 15, Diana's bracelets are modified so that she can manifest two short swords from them during battle. And that's just a brief summary of both characters' powers and abilities. As for who I think would win, after giving it a lot of thought, I think the winner would be Wonder Woman. Now you may be asking, what makes you pick Wonder Woman, Eris? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Even though Juggernaut is invulnerable and the limits to his strength are unknown, I still think Wonder Woman can take him. I mean, her strength is comparable to Superman, meaning she doesn't really have a disadvantage when it comes to strength. But the key element that I think makes her the winner in this fight is the powers she has from the gods, like her magical sword or swords, which like I said a bit ago, she specifically uses them against those who have the power of invulnerability, since invulnerability does not usually work against magical items. So Juggernaut's invulnerability isn't much of a factor at that point. I also think she's just the better fighter between the two of them, since she's a trained Amazon warrior. So she's excellent at hand-to-hand -hand combat and just overall warfare. I mean, in DC's New 52, she did become the goddess of war, so that alone is a pretty good argument to why Wonder Woman would win. Now, that's just my two cents, but I'm sure some of you guys think different and think Juggernaut would win, which is perfectly fine. Speaking of your thoughts, head over to our variant Facebook page to vote on a poll we posted there on who you think would win in this fight. And I'll announce who you guys chose the winner is at the end of next week's episode. When you buy a domain name from Domain.com, you get the power to influence and control what people find when they search for you online. No Domain Extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. Domain.com is affordable, reliable, and easy to use. The guys at Domain.com gave variants an awesome offer. Get 15% off Domain.com's already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code variant at checkout. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. First up for Wednesday, February 25th, we have Darth Vader Issue 2. The first issue in this series was really solid, and it also ties in with the main Star Wars book, so if you're a Vader fan, you need to check this out. Next, we have Spider-Gwen Issue 1. This character was so popular during the Spider-Verse event, Marvel decided to give her her own series, which is great for us Gwen Stacy fans. Now we have Deathstroke Issue 5. It's Deathstroke vs. Batman with Harley Quinn stuck in the middle. Need I say more? And finally, we have Batman Issue 39. This endgame storyline has been nuts thus far. It's definitely showing us why the Joker is Batman's greatest enemy. And that will do it for another episode of Variant, but be sure to like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Eris underscore Quinones, but I will see your lovely faces next week when I talk about all things comics. Hello Variant, I think the best archer is Hawkeye. Hawkeye would win because he has way more um, trick arrows. Personally, I would go with Oliver Queen because, well, he's a social justice warrior. He survived on a desert island for five years. And he's a billionaire. Green Arrow's a better archer than Hawkeye because he has the five years of hell training, which definitely makes him a bit more of a bamf, in my opinion. Hey, Aris, I'm gonna say Green Arrow because he's DC and he said it himself. He doesn't even have to aim anymore. I like Green Arrow as better as Archer because uh, I like his drive for why he fights crime and, you know, the way that the CW11 show Arrow has portrayed him just makes him, you know, a likable character and a nice background.